Logarithmic Functions. We're going to look at the definition and graph. The logarithmic function to the base a, where a is greater than 0 and a does not equal 1, is denoted by y equals log base a of x and is defined by y equals log base a of x if and only if x equals a to the y. The domain of the logarithmic function y equals log base a of x is x is greater than 0. So here's our definition and let's use it on the first one. I like to write the definition right under what I'm trying to um, figure out. So it helps me see that y is 4, a is 3, and x is 81. So then all I have to do is put it back into this equation. This one follows the same step. And finally this one. Remember if I put in y equals log base a of x, y is 3, a is 2, and x is 8. Let's solve for x. We're going to continue to follow our formula. So we know that 6 to the 2 equals x. Well 6 squared is 36, so x is 36. As we continue, 5 to the y equals 1 over 25. Now remember 5 squared is 25, but we want it 1 over 25, so that would simply be 5 to the negative 2 equals 1 over 25, and it turns out for this one y equals negative 2. I would like you to try this one on your own. Press pause, solve it, and then play to see the solution. Let's follow what we know. We would take 2 to the third equals 2x plus 1. 2 to the fifth is 8 equals 2x plus 1. And now I'm going to solve for x. And it turns out that x is 7 halves. Natural log works basically the same way. So we have y equals the natural log of x. And if we follow, we have x equals e to the y. And so x is e to the x. And y is 5. So we can clearly see that x would be 5. You try to solve this one. Press pause, solve it, and then play to see the solution. The first thing we want to do is get this by itself. So I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. We're going to use the natural log formula. Remember the natural log of x equals y and then x equals e to the y. So that's what this part is. It's x equals e to the y. So bring this one down. So we'll have the natural log of x, which turns out to be 3, equals y, which is 3x. We want to get x by itself. And when we use our calculator, we get it to be approximately 0 0.37. Domain of a logarithmic function. The domain of a logarithmic function equals the range of an exponential function, which is 0 to infinity. The same idea that the range of a logarithmic function equals the domain of an exponential function, negative infinity to infinity. Does this sound familiar? Think inverses. The function of f of x equals x, a does not equal 1, is 1 to 1, and thus has an inverse. And here's what the inverse is. It's the log. The logarithmic function with base a and the exponential function with base a are inverse functions. And what I did was I just proved it. f o f prime equals x, and f prime o f equals x. So that turns out that it proves that they're inverse functions. Recall that the graph of the inverse function is reflective about the line y equals x. The figure above is a typical shape for such graphs where a is greater than 1. This includes base e and base 10 graphs. The blue you'll see is y equals a to the x. And then the red, kind of pinkish, is y equals log base a of x. Recall that the graph of the inverse function is reflective about the line y equals x. Now this one is when a is between 0 and 1. Same concept, we have our blue, y equals a to the x. And then the pinkish, y equals log base a of x. First, let's look at the logarithmic function when a is greater than 1. 
we know that the domain is between 0 and infinity, and the range is between negative infinity and infinity. This is what the picture is going to look like, and it is increasing and continuous on its entire domain from 0 to infinity. That means when you draw the picture, you're never going to lift up your pencil, or there's not going to be any holes. The y-axis is a vertical asymptote at x approaches infinity. That means as we're on the x-axis, and we're going to the right to positive infinity. The graph goes through the points a to the negative 1, negative 1, 1, 0, and a, 1. And you can see that from our graph here. And that's true for all of these that when a is greater than 1. So this is something you're going to want to write down. So if that's true, then what happens when a is between 0 and 1? Well, once again, the domain is going to be the same. And of course, here's our picture. Um, it is increasing and continuous on its entire domain from 0 to infinity. The y-axis is a vertical asymptote as x approaches 0 from the right. So that means we're coming from positive infinity on the x-axis to 0. And the graph goes to the points a1, 1, 0, a to the negative 1, and negative 1. This you also want to write down. So you're going to have two different rules for logs when we graph them. So let's graph this function using everything that we just learned. The first thing we have to do is look for our a, and our a is 2. And that tells us that a is greater than 1. So when that's true, the graph will go through these points. And basically, all you're going to do is substitute 2 into a, which is what I've done here. But this is just for the function f of x equals log base 2 of x. I need to include this x minus 1 in my translation. So when I do that, I recall from a previous chapter that that means I'm going to move one unit to the right. So do you see how all this stuff we're learning comes together? When I did that, you'll notice that my first number, my x value in my first ordered pair is going to be 1.5. What I'm doing is I'm taking this 1 half and adding 1 to it, taking this 1 and adding 1, taking this 2 and adding 1 to it. So let's graph that. We have 1.5, negative 1. 2, 0, 3, 1, and our picture is going to look very similar to this. Well, the question asks us to graph the inverse 2, so let's do that. Here are my original points. Now remember, the inverse simply changes my ordered pair. It changes the x, y values in my ordered pair. So instead of having, having 1.5, I'm going to have negative 1, this guy. They just change around. So I'm going to graph that. We have negative 1, 1 1.5. 0, 2, and then 1, 3, and this picture is going to look something like this. So let's graph this other one. Let's graph the one in yellow, too, and let's see if they're really inverses of each other. So I'm going to have 1, 1.5, negative 1, 2, 0, 3, 1, and even though my graph isn't perfect, we can definitely see that they're inverses. And moreover, since exponential and logarithmic functions are inverses of each other, the graph of the log is the reflection about the line y equals x of the graph of the exponential function. So what that means is when I draw this y equals x, this line, we notice that these functions reflect about that line. So let's graph this picture. The first thing we need to do is figure out what a is. Well, a is this guy. It's a half. And since a is between 0 and 1, we know exactly how we're going to graph it. All I did was I took the rules from graphing the function between 0 and 1. I replaced all of the a's with a half. Now remember that 1 half to the negative 1 is the same thing as 2. So I have 2, negative 1 for this ordered pair. But these ordered pairs are for the function f of x equals log base 1 half of x. If we look at our original function, we know that we're going to be moving it. And if we remember from previous lessons or lectures, we're actually going to be moving that picture three units to the left. So all I did was I looked at my x values and I subtracted three from each one. So let's graph that. We have negative 2.5, 1, negative 2, 0, and negative 1, negative 1. This guy should be a negative 1 there. So negative 1, negative 1. And so we have a picture that looks like this. Next, it asks us to graph the inverse. Well, if the original order pairs are these, all we're doing is we're just flipping the x and y around. So instead of x being negative 2.5, x will be 1. So let's graph the inverse. We have 1, negative 2.5, 0, negative 2, and negative 1, negative 1. So we have a picture that looks like this. Let's graph the other one here. So we have negative 2.5, 1, negative 2, 0, and negative 1, negative 1. 
So this picture looks like this. And hopefully you'll notice that these two functions reflect about the line y equals x. Natural log works exactly the same. Thanks for watching. Come back again.